You're joining me, rather obviously, inside my car. This is a Toyota Igo Cross. I've only had this for about eight months or so, and I'm already gonna trade it in because it's just not really the most suitable thing for me. And I've only come to realize that after owning it for this amount of time. Now, when I buy a car, I always do a lot of research. I read things in magazines and especially watch YouTube videos. And I watch perhaps too many because I end up watching ones in foreign language with the subtitles turned on and translated into English to try and get as many different opinions about some Thing as you can and after reading all those things watching all those videos there's quite a few things about this car that I didn't really pick up from any of those and I thought it'd be a good idea for anyone that's planning on getting an iGo Cross if I go through the things I've learned about this car only through using it on a daily basis I've got a big list here now the reason I got this car in the first place was that I wanted a car that was kind of convertible but also small and on the budget side of things. And there aren't really that many cars out there. Convertibles seem to have disappeared. This one, I mean, it's sort of convertible. It's got this big canvas roof on here that you might see opening up, which I'm gonna leave open because it will make things a little bit brighter for the camera. Now, if you were to get one of these, the first thing you'll want to do is to turn off these really piercing and annoying beeps every single time you touch anything on this screen. It's just, insane that they put that on as a default i don't know why anyone would want that but you can just switch it off down here and it just makes everything so much more pleasant to use now i should mention that this hard plastic material that's on top of the dashboard can become really quite reflective in the front windscreen at times when the sun is at a certain position in the sky it's actually a little bit dangerous because it makes it really quite difficult to see where you're going now, when I first got it, I was playing the radio on the way back and it sounded really buzzy. And I was concerned that the speaker here was blown. It was coming from this side. Turns out it wasn't the speaker, it's the door card. This plastic is really rattly all the way along. And whenever there was a decent bass note playing through here, this was vibrating. Okay, now I put this one under a fault. I'm sure they don't all do this, but my fan whistles. Now, normally that would be just a leaf that's got stuck in there, but I've checked and there's nothing in there. It's completely clear. It just likes to whistle at you. Now, the model I've got here does have wireless Apple CarPlay and also one of these wireless charging pads. And if you position your phone on there just right, it will start charging. The only issue is, though, I've noticed that while you drive around, your phone will move out of position and stop charging. This could really do with being quite a bit grippier. What you're looking at through my greasy fingerprints is the map screen. And this is what it looked like when I first took delivery of the car. And I couldn't figure out how to change the settings to make this more visible. There are settings inside the map here, but there was nothing to do with changing the display other than from 2D to 3D. Well, it turns out that the setting to change this is elsewhere. If I could just close that, if we go back to the home over here and press that setting icon, it's under display and for some reason it had been set to this dark mode when I got it. I don't know if that's a default for all of them, but change it back to auto. And then if we go into the map now, we get a normal map display, which we can see exactly where we are, and where we need to go. Right, so I've got the radio on at the moment and I can control the volume here on the steering wheel, but I wanted to mute it and I couldn't figure out how to do that. Well, it turns out there are two ways. One, you have to go on the screen here and just tap the speaker, which is perhaps obvious now I think about it. But the other one is you can hold down the mode button here on the steering wheel. If you hold that down for a couple of seconds, that will also mute the sound. Now, my previous car was a five-year-old smart car, and yet it had an auto-dimming rear view mirror. On this newer car, fully specced up, every option ticked, it has a manually dimming mirror. I've become used to auto mirrors being a standard feature on cars nowadays, but it's not a big deal. On this particular car, you don't even have to flip that lever because the windows in the back of here have a really good tint on them. And I've never had any issues with the headlights of cars following me becoming too bright. One issue I've noticed is that there really aren't enough cubby holes. With this area taken up with the cup holders and the phone and this area not usable down here, underneath the handbrake. All I've got in the center is this little cup holder at the back that I can put a couple of things in. Of course, we do have 
the glove box at the front, but we could really do with something else at some point on the front here, just to put a bit of change or a card or something. As it is, it does feel like it's lacking in storage. These two blanking plates cover the positions where the buttons for the heated seats would have been, but I couldn't spec up the heated seats, it's not an option. The only way you can get them is on certain special editions of the car, and that's a bit of a shame because I really do miss my heated seats. Now, I mentioned this canvas roof before. When I bought this car, that was an important feature for me. And yet now it seems like you can't get one of those as an optional extra. You have to buy the model that comes with a canvas roof, but that was a lower spec one than the one I've got here. So it seems like you can't buy the fully spec model and add on a canvas roof anymore, which is a bit of a shame. Now you'll notice I've got the rubber mats here and I'd recommend getting these because originally I had the regular cloth mats and the one on the passenger side really slid around whereas this rubber one stays in place and of course it's a lot easier to clean. Now for me the steering assist and lane keeping assistance systems are very annoying. It moves the steering wheel towards parked cars whenever I'm crossing the centre of a road to go around them and it'll beep at me as well. So this button here on the steering wheel that lets you select which of those you want active, but it just goes back and forth between those two. You can't seem to turn them all off. Well, you can if you hold it down. You have to hold it for a couple of seconds, and once you've done that, you'll see they all disappear. And you can see that by the line under the clock. So if I turn them on again, we've got the two lines under the clock there. And if I was to hold the button down now, those lines will disappear. So it's a very handy feature being able to switch those off just by holding down one button rather than having to go through some silly menu system. Now, because I optioned the JBL sound system, if we look under the floor of the boot here, you can see we've got this large subwoofer unit which takes up the entire space almost of a spare tire. It raises up the inner floor as well, so you lose some of the storage space in here and it looks impressive, but it certainly doesn't sound it. I've hardly noticed any bass at all coming out of this thing. If you have one of these in here and you want to order the boot floor mat, well, you have to make sure you get the right one because there are two different dimensions for these depending upon whether you've got that JBL system because of the fact it raises the boot up the floor mat has to be a different size but you can see here that it's quite useful it's got a lip around the edge i'd recommend getting one of these whether or not you've got the sound system underneath it it just keeps things nice and clean inside your boot now this is just bare metal under here painted black but it'll get scratched very easily so it's worth optioning these as well you can get them from the spares catalog you can order them yourself and just pop them on because there's just velcro holding these things in place and then they clip in just under the headrest there at the top but once you pop your seats down those will protect the back of the seat i can't put it all the way down because i've got some stuff on the back seat but you can see here if you were to put something in the back it's protected at both that end and this end now i've mentioned i watch a lot of car reviews but one thing i've always noticed whenever they review a small car they'll do the same thing of sitting in the front, getting this seat adjusted for their driving position, and then go, right, I'm going to sit behind myself and see how much leg room there is. For me, that is never something that I'd need to know because when I've had a car in the past, I've perhaps had three people in it, not four, and therefore nobody needs to sit behind me, they need to sit behind the passenger seat, and the passenger seat obviously could be shoved quite a bit further forward. So this is how I do it. I'm sat on the passenger side at the moment, but I've got way too much leg room, so let's adjust that. I don't need all this if I'm carrying a passenger around, so let's just move myself further forward. Right, okay, so I've still got plenty there. I'm not banging my knees on anything. Let's see how much room there is in the back. Well, there you go, I can fit, and I'm just brushing against the seat ever so slightly, and I'm a six-foot-tall person, so a six-foot-tall person could sit behind another six-foot-tall person on the passenger side. However, on the driver's side, my seat is where I'd normally sit, and let's just move across to this side over here. Oh, I can't get my foot... No, I can't... No, that's... I can't even get my foot in the... Oh, hold on. Oh, no. No, forget it. That is not happening. However, on this side... Yeah, it'll work. One thing I've got to say though, these doors are crap. They do not open wide enough. I mean, that is it. So yeah, as far as taking old people anywhere, they need to be con contortionists. I banged my glasses on the way out of there. Yeah, that is a terrible thing. That door 
just does not open wide enough at all. And also, this is the tiniest, thinnest door that I've ever experienced in my life. This is just, it, it feels like it's made out of old tins of beans. It's just, no. I'm just opening up the bonnet here to show you the washer fluid filler. Look how far down that is in there. It's a really awkward angle to get to. You need to buy yourself a funnel if you want to fill this thing up, unless you want to get your washer fluid all over the inside of your engine bay. I don't know why they didn't just make that pipe a little bit taller and bring it up here somewhere. Very odd. Now, it does have a reversing camera, but unfortunately it isn't one of those ones which moves when you move the steering. The lines here are quite a lot wider than the car itself. In fact, let's try and get it in a space and see where those line up. Right, so you can see according to this now, the blue lines are right at the edges of the space. So you'd imagine that my car is as wide as those white lines. You can see there on the left, just touching that white line. And this one's just overlapping that. Let's see where we are on the outside. Yeah, so that's my side. And that's the other. So it's nice sometimes to be a little bit on the safe side, but on this occasion, it's saying that that is right up to the line. That is right up to the line. It's not great for accuracy, let's just say that. Right, now I'm just going to lock the car. And I'm going to start it up again, but I'm going to do it with my phone here. So I've got the My Toyota app. And if we press Start Climate, the car will turn on. It tells me that the car has started. Of course, the idea behind this is that you can defrost your car before you get in it. The only issue is that it will only turn on your air conditioning at whatever settings you left it at last time. It just reactivates it. So if you had it set to cool you down and you actually want it to heat your car up, you can't adjust that from the app. It just starts your car for you. And it will remain on for 10 minutes or if you unlock the doors, it will stop the engine. So you can see the settings there. Now I'll just press the unlock on the door and it's all gone off. At times the media system has been a little bit odd. As a general thing, it worked just fine, although it's one of those ones where you go into the navigation and you have to accept that you've got to use the maps every flipping time. So I connected my phone up initially and it was working fine. And now on this MyT Services thing, it tells me that there's a system error and I've just done a software update on it this morning and it applied just fine so I thought that might have resolved that issue but my tea services is like an irrelevant load of nonsense that you don't need anyway. Now with keyless entry cars I tend to keep one of these in an RFID case but the spare key that's in your house you also need to make sure that that one is shielded as well but with the Toyota keys you can actually lock the key out by holding down a button for an amount of time and then that key can't be used again until someone actually physically presses a button on it which is a handy feature. Now when I spec'd this vehicle up I chose the automatic gearbox which for this model is a CVT and when you combine that CVT with the low power engine it makes quite a bit of a racket when you go up hills and it appears to pedestrians that you've got yourself stuck in first gear and you don't know what you're doing. Now, I'm going to be getting rid of this car within a couple of days, I think, and it's one of those ones that I'm really not going to be sentimental over. I've had cars in the past. Oh, there we go. We're overtaking a bicycle. I've got a choice of either killing the bike or obeying the beep. But yeah, I'm not sentimental at all about this car. Uh, it's just something I've had for a while and I'm moving on to something else. But one thing that I did appreciate about it was the ride quality. I thought it gave a really smooth quality of ride. The seats are comfortable as well. They could have just done with sticking a one litre turbo in it, I think. And then the rest of the things are just silly little niggles that you get with any car. You can never get the perfect car, but I just wanted to point out some of the things that I didn't learn from watching loads of reviews on this. Overall, I wouldn't get another one, 
but it's been okay. It, it's done the job for a while, but I'm moving on. <laughs>